Eight, 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 it was Sheffler. Sure. It was Sheffler's. Thank you, Jesse. Yesterday. I don't even know that. Now, are they right up in Groton? Right on Cobb Street. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I know Cobb Street came up in the country there. So, okay. maybe that's who my brother was talking about. That was yesterday. I don't see any other auctions yeah. listed for Groton. I right. try to get the brother to come up here. Hey, folks, I have a start the meeting now. 705. Uh, welcome to the December 20th, 2023 meeting, the last town board meeting of the year. I'll start the meeting with the pledge to the flag. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, justice for all. Start the meeting with uh, opportunity for privilege of the floor. So there's nobody signed up here at the town hall. And Jesse, I don't see anybody from Zoom land. There's Catherine Goldberg. Let's her to unmute. Great, thank you. Hi, everybody. Catherine. I just had a question to be honest because I happen to have heard seemed pretty random to me, but twice in the past two days, some comment about or question about laundromat not being on a use table. And as I looked at it myself, I noticed, in fact, there is no laundromat on the use table. And I was just curious about it. So I don't know if you, if that was like a oversight or it was intentional. I understand that anything that's not on a use table is, you know, not permitted. So I was just looking for clarification because I had heard it from a couple different people and I didn't know that that was a thing. So thanks. Okay, uh, I'd like to respond yeah. to that. Sure, thanks Catherine, go ahead. Uh, the Michelle. reason we left it off the use table is we felt that you would need to have town sewer and town water in order to support the water use for a laundromat. The zoning commission. The zoning commission, we, uh, we talked about it. Uh, I believe uh, Ernie Bales did some research on the topic and so that's why it's been left off. So we don't go. Large had one down here. I don't care. So uh, wait, that's so not, uh, you're not recognized. And if, if that's something you that don't recognize me, Michelle. If so. somebody uh, can find information to the contrary, I'm sure when we talk about amending the zoning law, we'd be happy to do that. But that's the reason it's been left off. Okay. Thank you. Great. All right. Uh, okay. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we will now uh, proceed to the um, to the agenda, and I'll start with my report. Well, can I make a quick announcement, oh, Mark? Sorry, yeah. Um, I just have to get the information back up. Sorry, one second. An announcement? Yes, an announcement that on uh, Wednesday, January third, from at two o'clock in the town hall. Um, um, Harris Weiss, who's a representative of Governor Hochul, is going to come to town and uh, host a swearing-in ceremony for the for the new town board, the four members of the town board who were who were uh, elected. So that'll happen at two o'clock in the town hall, and I believe there will be a small reception after that. Um, our elections seem to have caught the attention of the governor's office. <laughs> okay, thanks, Tim. Um, I also want to add to the agenda the procedural uh, uh, the setting the organizational meeting date for 2024, our first meeting in January. So we'll do that <laughs> later. So I'll proceed with my uh, supervisor's report. Uh, the Shared Services Committee, um, which is the uh, comprised of the supervisors and, and mayors um, of Tarkas County. They unanimously approved the 2024 shared services plan for countywide rapid emergency medical response on December 11th. 
uh, for recommendation to the county for submission to New York State as a 2024 Shared Service Initiative for Tompkins County. On November 28th, uh, we held uh, the, uh, an informational meeting on the Thermal Energy Network Feasibility Study um, that's ongoing for the hamlet of Steedsville at the uh, community center there that was well attended. Um, and NGO is requesting energy use information from as many Speedsville homes as possible, and we're working on that. Uh, Bill Padoka and I met with Ro Roxy Johnson, Kristen Hitchka, and Rebecca Minus of the um, Source Water Protection uh, Group that's been working on source water protection for the city of Ithaca uh, to discuss stormwater protection considerations for large solar projects. Uh, the town board met on December 14th with LaBella engineers who have been working on and produced a, a draft report for um, highway, the highway facilities. Um, and the report um, is posted, I believe it's posted on the town website. If it's not, it will be shortly. Um, uh, and there's a highway projects folder under the documents tab where you can find it. And the board did meet with them, and um, we were um, we will be seeking modifications to the to the scope and design of the project to um, to control costs. Um, a video security system has now been installed by security in this building and the town office building. Um, so we have uh, cameras out facing out front to the parking lot and the front entryways. Um, installation of monitors is pending um, for, the, for the town clerk and the court clerk. Um, I've, uh, I'm ready to submit uh, for uh, reimbursement to the state for the water quality improvement project, uh, the culvert replacement on, uh, on Eckers Road uh, at Boyer Creek. Um, and so I should uh, submit that tomorrow. And I, I attach the final report that I crafted with photographs for, um, for my report. And um, then I've been working along with the rest of the board on final edits of the zoning law. And I just want to, um, the, my notes would be that the majority of changes are editorial. The policy changes that I will note tonight include um, that we um, adhere to the uh, to the state on the definition of a home occupation in that it um, occupy no more than 50% of the area of a, a home or an accessory structure. And then the other um, significant policy uh, change that we made was um, in um, the stream uh, we drafted, or we're, we're calling it the stream corridor overlay district to indicate that it applies to stream uh, stream sites, so the uh, riparian area of stream sites. And it uh, is comprised of riparian buffers along streams, uh, 100 feet from the top of bank for Six Mile Creek in the Ag Rural District and the Focus Commercial Districts, 75 feet in the Hamlets, and 50 feet from the top of bank for all other perennial streams, and 25 feet from the top of bank for intermittent streams. And then um, I'll note uh, additionally that um, the original overlay in the, uh, the first draft of the, the zoning law had wetlands and floodplains including in, included in that overlay district, so they're separate now. Um, and so the wetlands are regulated by state and federal agencies and the floodplains are designated by FEMA and then uh, they are regulated by the town's flood damage uh, prevention local law that we uh, updated in 2021. Uh, so that's my report. Any questions? Was there any talk about costs for the shared um, services on so the the, um, the shared service uh, proposal to the state 
is for the state to fund the first pilot year. That's what it is for. There will be ongoing discussions about the cost. Um, going forward. Pardon me? Going forward. After going forward. This year. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's great news. Yeah. yeah. The county figured that out. That's really good. Thank you, Mark. Yep. Uh, and so um, I'll move on to the town clerk report. Jesse, are you there? Yep, yeah. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, great. Um, I'll just mention that the clerk's office is going to be closed um, December 25th through the 27th. Um, tax bills are being mailed on the 27th, and the office will be closed on January 1st, and January 2nd we'll, we'll begin uh, collecting. I will have the hours and closings posted both on the website and on um, my voicemail box. And um, that's pretty much all I need to mention tonight. Great. Thanks, Jesse. Oh, I, know actually, you... I, I should also, sorry, I should also mention that I, I have spoke to um several vendors um i i wanted to something that i've been looking into the last couple of years that i i really wanted to try to integrate was um online um uh, payment processing for um other fees besides just taxes um i did talk to um forte who is the credit card vendor that we use through our tax system they're integrated with our um, clerk software. And after receiving um, the fees and and what that would entail for the customer, um, in my opinion, I, I'll forward that to to everybody. But in my opinion, it, it, it wouldn't mark. I think I shared it with you. It's just not worth it for um, for us to, to implement that at this time unless we can find a different vendor. It would actually be the same fees that that they charge for tax bills, so it's a three point seven five percent charge. Um, so on a, a dog license, that's five dollars for a senior. It just doesn't it just doesn't seem like it would be beneficial for for the residents. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, my own feeling is that. It, it's scary because I, I think people might take advantage of it and then be disappointed, so or worse than disappointed. <laughs> so I will keep looking into it and and like I said, I've got calls into other vendors if if it's something that we can implement through a uh, different software company. Um, if their charges aren't as outrageous, then um, I definitely want to want to keep looking out for that. I do think it would be great. For, for those that don't mind paying the extra to have that uh, service. But I also think it will cause uh, a lot of, you know, people that don't read the fine print and um, don't expect those those charges. Um, it could be pretty devastating, so. Great, thanks for doing that legwork. So. Any questions for Jesse? Thank you, Jesse. Yeah, thanks. Right. Yep, thank you. And uh, move on. Code Officer Report. Cliff uh, did send us a report. Any comments or questions? I, I wrote him and asked him if <clears throat> he wanted to revise it because it looked like it might have been confused with an earlier report. So. I haven't heard back from him yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Yep. And move on to committee updates. Any updates? I mean, I mentioned that Mark and I had a very productive meeting with Cliff about about transitioning into code off into um, zoning officer as well as code officer, and. Um, that seemed to go very, very well. So I think we have a good understanding about how we might 
proceed initially in that in that direction. So, so uh, we're just trying to get the ducks in a row of being ready to go when if and when the time comes. Yeah, kind of a big part of that discussion was about not the cloud permit. Yeah, so also. Yeah. So there's so um, Cliff has been looking for looking at the software throughout the fall that would facilitate both um, code work and and potentially zoning. And at the same time, just by chance, the the county was was also looking into similar softwares to be used at the county level. So there were a number of demonstrations of different softwares. And Cliff did a lot of research of what other towns were doing as well. And it was Groton is using uh, the software um, cloud, permit. cloud permit. And they gave us a demonstration. I wasn't there, but Mark was there and Jesse were there. Um, and um, what they're proposing is to give us, so one of the things that we don't have, which other towns do have is, is a, uh, an electric digital system for submitting um, building permits and code work. So everything is unified, it's online. Currently, it sometimes goes to the clerk, it sometimes goes to the code officer. So this would this promises to eliminate the middleman of manual work at our level. Um, most exciting about this is that the same company offers similar um, zoning software <clears throat> so that um, as we understand it, um, they're going to design a system so that once, if and when zoning is in place, um, residents can file their zoning applications electronically and the system will set, set up to walk them through the steps, what they need to, to do and what they need to check which will then be passed directly to the zoning officer. You can then verify that, communicate with the resident about whether or not um, their project needs to go to the review board or not, et cetera. So it's going to be really a big step up for the town to have the software and, and hopefully also take a lot of pressure off the clerk's office, which for years is oftentimes kind of been caught in a clerical middle ground to a certain extent of communication with paperwork and that sort of thing. So it's a, it's a really good step up. And so I think Cliff is to be commended for, for helping us out during this research and taking us to this step. So we'll be passing or submitting a resolution about that tonight. Yeah, if, if you have to hire somebody part-time for another town or something, that, yeah, they're all in this, used to working with the same counting Seems like a really good idea. And maybe, you know, ideally, maybe the county will adopt the same system. They're yeah. looking at two or three of the systems, and this is one yeah. of them. That would be great. And that would be really good if they did that. But uh, we wanted to make sure that, that for the next few years, we have a system in place that we can just be ready to go with. <laughs> so the transitions that we're likely to face are going to be less daunting and confusing on a kind of bureaucratic yeah. level. So this, this really is very promising. Yeah, I think Steve and Dan be have shown interest. So also, yeah. It'll allow easy sharing <clears throat> with the appropriate committee or board. Yep. And, and that's another huge step. So in our current system, um, sharing with, say, the review board or the planning board almost always happens completely through paper. Mm -hmm. And it's very cumbersome and very expensive and very time consuming. So this will cut down on a lot of that. It won't eliminate paper. It doesn't need to eliminate paper, but it's going to give us a much more flexibility. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, site plans come in on big right or not. Yeah. Well, some some review members might prefer to have paper, and they can have paper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Other thoughts or questions? Okay, thanks, Tim. Uh, no other committee updates? Uh, uh, I met with the Transportation Council, the Itaca Tompkins County Transportation Council, had the policy planning 
meeting to get uh, committees together. Um, so kind of they're working on the chip and other highway things. So it's uh, um, nothing really, <laughs> not, nothing really major. It was just you know ongoing, yeah, ongoing work. So okay, it's good. Okay, great. Well, I'll move on to the business of the meeting. Um, before I, I guess I would um, like to open um, some final discussions of a few items um, for our consideration on the zoning law. Um, So one thing, um, com commercial port boarding operations. Um, I have from my notes and memory, I put those in the use table as permitted in all districts, just P as in all districts. Um, and I just um, wondered if we need, if we want to think about that again. Is, is well, that that, that's something that caught my attention when I, I reread the, the draft really carefully this week caught a few inconsistencies. Um, that was one of the use table that struck me as a little bit strange because these are these are potentially really big operations, and we're not talking about some people keeping their own horses there. We're talking the minimum is ten horses. Yeah, and so it struck how, me. How would that be? That? Yeah. Well, exactly. So it occurred to me that we might not want to make it see across the board. Um, um, and it would be a pretty good size, have to be a pretty good size barn to for 10 right. prices. I mean, the the examples of that would be the facility on Valley Road beyond the highway barn. Yeah. Um, the old Morgan thing. Mm -hmm. Or the horse farms that are on Irish Settlement Road that are that are adjacent. They're really large. So it just seemed to me that to be they're driving, right? There and tried to, yeah, yeah, a little bit there's, bizarre. There's the so, one on Bell School Road, too. Yeah, so I mean, I would recommend it's in Bell School Road, keeping yeah. them P, of course, an ag and ag rural across ag rural, yeah, and then thinking about where else they might be. Um, as we look across, and I don't think we have spent that much time thinking about this, but. It just seemed to me somewhat inconsistent. It caught my eye because it was different from commercial kennels. Um, and these are much more large scale than commercial kennels. Mm -hmm. And currently in the commercial um, and loud. <laughs> <laughs> the horses are kicking out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I mean, it would seem to me that that it would be appropriate in agro-rural, not in the residential districts of Bessemer and West Slaterville, potentially Slaterville Springs, because it's adjacent to a lot of ag land, directly adjacent to a lot of ag land. Um, maybe Caroline Center, Carolina and Speedsville, but that I'd, I'd defer to Others and thinking about that. Um, Center Brookendale, certainly not. Hamlet Brookendale, probably not. But it goes back to the square footage of permitted. Per well, but if it's agricultural, then it doesn't. Yeah. But even in even at that, it's what five thousand square feet. Right. And for ten horses, they could get by with five thousand square feet, probably. Yeah, you could. You could, right? <clears throat> oh, so I would say just they shouldn't be permitted in the uh, residential districts. So, yeah. So the next is there. I mean, I, I don't know. I feel somehow maybe that got changed through the whole. I, don't I think, we, I think what happened is we brought it up very late in the game and just yeah. didn't have time to really think about it. Yeah, I would say permit it in ag rural and not permit it in. Uh, you know, Slaterville Springs and uh, we're in ag rural and focused commercial of somebody. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how big. Yeah, maybe not from any place else. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so I have. So I've got a question here, though. 
So I, I ride at a place that's actually located in the village of Burdett. And they've got about 40 horses. They're right on the edge. And I think most of the horses are kept out. Like So the main office and the main ring are in the village, but the fields are out side the village. So I'm just, I'm sorry to be picky about this, but that, that actually doesn't seems to be a, a well run facility that works well. Uh, but they're so, not all in the same location, it sounds like. Sorry? It sounds like, the it sounds like they're not all in the same location. The horses are in the egg world. Yeah. No, yeah. The, so how is, it, how is that working? Well, I mean, I, I'm saying it's fine, but I'm thinking it's, I guess it's kind of in both. Know. It's in the village and it's outside the What's village. What's in the village? The barn where the horses live, the ring, the office, the house, the people that own it. There's where you had square footage is the ring. It's not that big. Well, no, yeah, no, it's it's a it's it's a big ring. The outside ring is big, and then they've got the inside ring that's smaller. They're building a new barn for stuff. Um so but I'm just saying that that is well it sounds like they're really in an ag rural area. They can they're, call it a village if they want, but it's for that is a village, it's an incorporated village. But and it's you know I'm just saying it's on the edge and there doesn't seem to be a problem. That's my point. Is that they're having they have a they run a good program, you know, good horses, a good good business for the community. Um, and and it's next to a gas station, it's next to the across from the fire hall. Um, you know, and yet it's within a village. Well, I mean, so you know. Oh, well, I'm just saying, I don't know if it's always conceivably if somebody well, I'm saying it's not always incompatible. No, but I That's, was just gonna but say, to say it's not to have in any residential area. If somebody wanted to open a new facility and their their office is going to be at the edge of a of a hamlet. Yeah. And the thing is adjacent to it. One couldn't imagine that, that would be accommodated. Okay. They could ask for yeah, it could be flexible, right. I guess. Yeah. You can ask for a variant. Or or simply have the horse breeding facility or horse breeding right. facility uh -huh. there and the business office here. Simple. Yeah. Okay. So I, I would still go back to suggesting that it be permitted in ag rural and focus commercial, like you said, not permitted in the Hamlets. You know, if, if there's a Hamlet area that mm -hmm. matches yeah. what you're describing, right? Then they could ask that could be the variance. All right. Yeah. I th thanks for the reminder that everything's more flexible than right. Than I realize, you know, yeah. so I have a tendency to go. But off. yeah, you know, it's so. also hard for me to. <clears throat> we're not village of Burdett, so I, right. I, no, I know. geographically, I don't, I'm not sure we're matching up here. So I'm not sure if we're talking about the same thing, really. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe anyway, I don't go to Burdett. So. Well, there are a lot of similarities. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So I mean I could I could imagine something like that in the handle of the Carolina. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so, I could imagine that. You only want to leave it in the Carolina. Speed, so. Yeah. So. You want to leave it in the We can leave it in Caroline. Leave it in Caroline. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So permitted in egg rural, Caroline. Mm -hmm. Unless so, you want to have it with an SBR in Caroline. Yeah. Uh, would, yeah. work, would it work in Caroline Center, Car Center, Caroline Center, Caroline and Speedsville? I can't think of a, an area that's big enough in Caroline Center. You can't either. Yeah. It's just that we don't, the way that we've structured this is we've, you know, yeah. we've combined those three. Right. Caroline's funny because it's got together. the back rule. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I think we've got the last spot. Uh, yeah. Right. So I can see allowing it in Caroline with an SBR. Say permitted egg rural SPR in Caroline, mm -hmm. not permitted in the other small hamlets, permitted and focused commercial. So for this one use, we'll cut out Caroline, or so we just leave it. I think that seems to me to be potent, you know, for the first time out, that's going to get really complicated. Leave it, okay. Just leave it as you suggested the first time. Okay. So people could. They want to do it, then they can ask for variance. Or we can change it later. 
Okay, that's fine. Caroline, that would be, I mean, that would be imaginable because actually the land is split. Right. The laws are actually so it would be very figure. imaginable and it would just be something that would be common sense at the time. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're going to settle on permitted uh, in ag rural and focus commercial Correct. only. Correct. And just as a P. Correct. Okay. Um, and let's see, um, Michelle, you asked a question about. Mark, may I? I don't want to interrupt if it's, but if you want, uh, a, may I contribute something as an owner of a horse farm? I don't know if this would be helpful, but you know, I don't want to derail you, but I'm happy to like help if this is helpful. <laughs> Go ahead. And that is to say a couple of things. One is just someone living anywhere, they either have the capacity to do this or they don't. Like it's a matter of land. It's a matter of whether you want a commercial operation. It's a matter of where you are. You know, you're right, Kate, a hundred percent. Like there could be a commercial horse boarding facility behind the our dandy mark. Just like in Burdette, it's right next to their dandy mart. So like it kind of is either going to be possible for the person to do or it's not possible for the person to do. I just I don't think personally this requires so much, you know, specific nitpicking because you don't know what is possible in the future. Like right now, and I hear you guys say like there aren't any parcels that this could work for, but that doesn't mean we're trying to plan for 50, 100 years from now. It doesn't mean that those parcels won't exist. Um, so I just don't think it's like necessary to legislate this. It's either going to be possible or not based on, you know, manure management and, you know, location of roadways and all these other things that people are just going to have to think about. They can they don't need the zoning to, to help them determine whether they can do it is what my one point. And the other point is just to make sure it's really clear that I understand, because I know the definition that you're using is the New York State definition of a commercial horse boarding facility, which is 10 distinct horses and $10,000 per year of gross income. Um, but let's say you have a small, like let's say I have a border, which I have had. And let's say my farm was in Brooktondale, like it could be, you know, Carol's farm on Brooktondale Road, and you have two or three borders. That's not a commercial horse boarding facility. Right. right. But you're still, you know, you're still boarding horses. So I just want to make sure that people are clear that it doesn't get confusing. You know, you're looking at the New York State definition of this, not can I board my horse? That's right. So that's right. That's, that's good. That's a good clarification. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah, I, I guess I would point out that people don't always do the right thing. And so uh, that's kind of what, you know, there's only lost your foresight. We have no problems specifying where we would allow a commercial zone, a commercial horse farm to be. And then in the future, if it turns out that, you know, it's restrictive or unnecessary, we can change it. That's right. We're expecting this to be yeah. flexible. This to is change. A, a work in progress. Okay. So. Great. People just do strange things sometimes. Um, so let's see. Um, so yeah, so I had the question about the gun range. Sure, yeah, go you? ahead. Yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> I kind of thought we had discussed this in some of the zoning discussions, but maybe not. In our definition of a commercial recreate, outdoor commercial, it the definition kind of implies that it's like things like, you know, athletic things, you know, baseball fields or whatever. But what if somebody wants to have a an outdoor shooting range? Is that covered under the commercial outdoor, you know, commercial recreational use? I think it would be, but okay. They tend to be a little noisy. Yeah. For some uh and so where are they? And so they're basically allowed uh, with an SBR and Ag Rural, Slaterville Springs. I'm just, uh, I was wrong. The article I saw was actually in the New Yorker. It was somebody opened a, uh, without, <laughs> without a permit, they opened one in a uh, small town. I think, I think Michelle, given where 
they're allowed. Yeah. It doesn't look like it would be an issue at all, really. Uh, Caroline's, there, it would be allowed in um, Caroline Center, Caroline and Speedsville. Okay. And Slaterville Springs. Focus commercial. And, and egg roll. Wait. Oh, yeah, an egg roll. Where's my, oh, I don't have the whole thing. Oh, yeah, there I see it. Okay. I mean, the one I that I can think you. of that isn't functioning anymore was the the club off of Valley Road, you know, at the end of Valley Road, and I was there for years. Okay, well, I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Yeah, yeah, like, no, it's a good good thing to bring to your It's keep shooting up on South Road. They're just the first on the Creek Road, the Caroline Sportsman's Club. Yeah, that's what, that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I think it's okay. Okay. And what about the um, like say the gun, the gun and rod or rod gun clubs, things like that. Same thing. That's an outdoor recreation. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking, hasn't somebody bought a place on Buffalo? No. Yeah. I, I have no idea what their intentions are. Yeah. But once again, that would be angry roll anyway. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mark, shall I just call attention to a couple of other things that I noted? Sure, go ahead. I'm collecting my input. Um, one, Mark mentioned this, that, that in the in the final draft that we had um, for home businesses, it, it still said 100% in accessory structures. So we had to change that to 50% for state law. That was just a more of a typo editorial. Um, and then there was one, I'm just trying to find it. Uh, the C and the D mark. I'm just trying to find where that oh, was. Can we can I yeah. talk about that? Yeah, yeah. We did talk to Nan about it. Okay, um, good. So Tim pointed out that nine point nine point one C and D would appear to uh, contradict one another. So. Should put a flag there. <coughs> okay, so um, nine point one. What page are we on here? So, well, it's it's Article Nine at the first page on mine, which is okay. a draft a long yeah. time ago. It was one hundred twenty-five. Okay, I'm not going to be in there. Okay, so. A is any lawful lot, building, structure, or use of premises existing at the time of enactment of local law um, uh, may be continued. This is the, the title of Article 9 is non conforming uses. So I'm right, just trying right. to stay here. Um, so A covers that. Same. So anything that's non conforming when this is passed. Uh, may be continued even though the lot building structure or use of premises does not, does not conform to the provisions of the local law. Um, and then the B, paragraph B, then any separately deeded lot in existence prior to the adoption date of this local law or any subsequent amendment um, may be considered as, as um, Complying with all uh, minimum lot requirements shall be allowed to have one principal structure um, and accessory structures we want to add. And complying with all minimum lot requirements. Um, and no variance should be required to develop such lot provided that all applicable laws and regulations, blah, 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 are met. Um, and then um, then the next paragraph addresses subdivision of non-conforming lots. And then the last one, D says no lots will be reduced in areas so that it creates a non-conforming lot. <laughs> so um, which is so um, now suggested it's an ordering issue. So that D should be moved up right after A. And then um, and then paragraph B would follow. Um, 
in regards to uh, a non-conforming lot. Um, and then C would be divided into two subparagraphs of B. Um, the first addressing, um, it, well, it says in any district where residences are permitted, which is all districts, such undersized non-conforming lots may be used for not more than one single family dwelling and accessory structures. And then it should be, it shall be allowed to be subdivided once to create two non-conforming lots. So this was a big thing that the zoning commission grappled with, right, Michelle? Yeah. And then, um, and then it would specify that all other requirements for such use lie, uh, provided that all other provisions um, and dimensional requirements um, shall be met. So, I don't know. Does that help? So did she, so if we move it up above, she thought it wasn't co contradictory then? Yeah, she felt like it did it. So did it frames flow, is, okay. So yeah. That, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It's not allowed, but under this situation, it is. for non-conforming okay. lots, no, that, these that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Let's do so, that. Uh, so, yeah. so she's gonna make that change. She'll so, make that change. Yeah, okay, she's working on it tomorrow. Thanks, that's good. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Tim? The only other thing that I, you were going to talk to Nan about, I think the very end, the language pertaining to pertaining to amendments. Yeah, I talked that through with her. So, so that's okay. It's totally okay. 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 So, I'm, I'm good at that. Um, really is summarized in paragraph A procedure the town may, town board may from time to time on its own motion or on petition or on recommendation for the planning board or review board. So, those things, a peti petition or recommendation from either of those boards okay. are only suggestions. It's the town right. board's. Uh, prerogative. Uh, then go on to say, amend the regulations and districts established under this law. Um, and there's a process for that, which requires another public hearing. It's it's not that right. they can just do it. So, right. um, Mark, who is Leanne? Who's what? I, me, I misunderstood, but you referred to Leanne as working on this. No, Nan. Oh, Nan. No. My mistake. Thank you. Um, okay, that's fine. Yeah, and the rest of it goes through, right? Specifies the public hearing process and all that. So, yep. Okay. Um, and everything else I had was just, were just typos. Great. That I sent you. Yeah, so I went through the laundry list I had today, you know, thinking I would try to point out for the public, like the substantive changes we've made. And the ones I summarized in my supervisors as well. If you have others, let me know. But those seems like mostly it's clarifying the language and the process. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there were a number of places where we reduce the complexity mm -hmm. of the law, either by, by clarifying the language or in a few cases by reducing three steps down to one step. So there were, mm -hmm. we did that systematically as we went through this, this since, since April. But I, th I think that those would be the largest areas of change. I mean, always what we are, what we're doing throughout the process was trying to respond to what we understood was to be public interest in relationship to to this draft and uh, to do what we could to simplify it and clarify it and, and make it effective, make it as effective as possible. To clarify and eliminate confusion. Yeah. Because I kept hearing that in public hearings we had, people seemed confused about what something meant. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I read the whole thing over again this weekend really carefully. And if you read it, 
if you read it as one document, which it won't be used that way, but mm -hmm. I read it as one document and I was really satisfied by mm -hmm. its clarity and its development and how it led into each other. And I, so I think we did a really good job. There was a couple things for me. I was in definitions under cemeteries and said a place for interment of the dead. And I said, dead what? <laughs> That cemeteries are quite popular. But I think it's understood what it is. No, it isn't. I don't know, at least this guy, that's, I just read definitions in cemeteries. I just interment of the dead. Dead what? You want to say dead people? Well, or, or I wanted to say uh, pet dead. cemeteries are okay. Two, I mean, yeah. If, if we don't say first, human, then we could have pet cemeteries. So if we don't say human, we could have pet cemeteries then, right? Or mixed if it's not that is yeah. prohibited. So. so I don't I don't know. I just I just came to I guess just because I deal with cemeteries a little bit. And pet cemeteries are something new and quite popular, maybe not here yet, but all the cemeteries are looking for revenue streams. So if we just say the dead, that covers it, right? All right, so pet cemeteries would be allowed. Okay, if that's the way, if that's the way. Is there any problem with that? If, if that's the way people are reading it, if that's the way he feels an enforcement official would, would read it. Um, that's, that's how it is being passed on this, okay. on this board. So that well, we could put a clause to say either human or cuts. Right. <laughs> well, what, I don't know. I don't see the point. Yeah. Or ghosts. So we're not. I mean, I don't think there's any place that says you can't have a pet cemetery, right? So no, it's okay. It's either a human cemetery or a pet cemetery. They're legislated differently, Michelle, and I want to point out that I actually brought this up to Jean at the very beginning to have this on the use table, so I will shut up now, but this is a specific item of a whole host of other sort of things for the town in terms of pet cremation, cemetery, memorial parks, other. Thank you. We could easily say human or pets. Say what? We could easily say human or pets if that would make people feel more at ease. Mm -hmm. We could say that. Yeah. yeah. Probably... Oh, how about human or animal? Human or animal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Human or animal. Human or animal. Thank you. I'd rather just put it in there than like... discuss it then. Yeah. I don't want to complicate things. Okay, good. That's not. Please, please, let's just keep complicating things. We don't want to complicate it. So, like, there are some people who want their pets cremated remains to be buried with them. And would that be an. I know. I know. We don't need to know. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I think that's a. It may be the decision of the individual cemetery. I think so, yeah. 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 It's human or uh, animal in the that it would fine. be up to the individual yes. cemetery. I mean, it, cemeteries are allowed in all districts, so. I guess I don't get, I don't get what's the problem. Um, I've dealt with regulators for virtually my whole business life, and it's amazing what they can read into things because it's the way they read the regulations. Let's just, just say you, you're fine with human or right. human. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. I, I, human or animal. What, yeah. that, what's your proof? What I said? Human or animal. Yeah. yeah. That covers everything. It covers everything. Everything. Yeah. Buried with you or not? Yeah. So, well, and then the other thing is 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 should permissive or mandatory? If if something should if if the parking lot should be on the side of the building. Is may that be called where, permissive? Where are you reading this about parking lots? Well, I want to know where it is. Yeah, exactly. But I think should is definitely it's may or should. It's I okay. think that's I think a recommended. It's yeah. recommended. Yeah. It's not, okay, that's a recommended. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You would say must yeah. if it was. Yeah. Okay. So, well, word usage. 
Uh, the word shall is mandatory. The word may is permissive. Correct. So shall. So, okay, but should is different than shall. Should is mandatory. Oops. Shall is mandatory. May is permissive. Okay. Well, I think, I think you're right, Jim. So <laughs> should would be mandatory. I don't have it, but it was talking about specifications of parking lots and developments, and it said that parking lots should be. Yep. I, thought, I think that's a guideline, though. No, no, no it that, needs, I need to know mandatory. what section. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, what section? Yeah. Uh, it's so in, maybe it's in the, the commercial, when you remember the commercial you guide, design guidelines. Development guidelines for commercial development in the Hamlet districts. Is that it? It's, it's, Guidelines. I just have to find it. I'm looking at page 65. Oh. Yeah. Not development standards, it's the guide, it's the commercial guidelines. Hmm. No, those are standards we're talking about for commercial guidelines. I was, it says development guidelines for commercial development. Oh, there you go. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I, I was looking at C instead ah, of D. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but what what Cal is referring to is in the in the design guidelines. Specifically you know, have you in the design it? guidelines. They look at the if it's if it's design guidelines, then that's those are guidelines, then that's Right. I'm just trying to find where it is so that we can go it to it. Be 5.2B. Those are guidelines. It would be 6.2. It would be 6.28. 6 6 6.28. 6.28. 8? 8. 6.28. Providing that you know, I'm using an earlier. Drive. All right, so okay, do one six point two eight. Those are signs, those are design standards, Got parking areas, right? So, those are shall, yeah. okay, these are design those standards. Because yeah. shall be located, those are that's mentor, yeah. shall, yeah. Mentor, yes. Yes. So yes, so it doesn't that's... say should. Okay, I, did, I mean, I'm just. I'm I, read it then. I think that's fine for a design standard. Yeah, so that, that is mandatory. Okay. I think before the public hearings, I would like to see us have the potential districts map include the state lands, if that's possible. Right now, when I look at that map and I see here's Beesmer, here's Brookendale, here's Slaterville, Caroline Center, and I know that the roughly a quarter of the town is state land. And, you know, I just look at that map and I think that here there's this huge, it it looks like there's a huge chunk of ag rural. Mm -hmm. It's not ag rural, it's state land. Just for people that are looking at the map. So you want to add it into the map? It's, it's still rural land. We don't have any jurisdiction in any way over it, do we? Do we? Well, I'm just saying, I don't know. I just yeah. I, I I think maps are really cool. I just yeah. like them to be accurate. Yeah. Okay. I think that could be added. We could. I mean, we could we could do that for the public hearing. I would recommend doing it for the public hearing as a supplemental map. Yeah. So that we can release the we can release the law now for review. Okay. And then for the public hearing, we can provide a supplemental map map that shows the state lines for public information purposes but well, yeah. i wouldn't want to delay where we are for three weeks to yeah get okay oh, I, I, and i don't i mean i yeah. i just i don't think it would be yeah, yeah. i mean we can, we can inquire about it yeah and what about the fact that we're considering square footage of a town highway bar in relation to what is the limit of <laughs> a, build, a structure in that should there just be like a, what's the word for it? A disclaimer that the town doesn't have to obey its own regulations. I, I, well, yeah, first uh, of all, I don't even, I don't know. 
what it is relative to you talk about lot coverage. Um, square build, building square footage. So the building square footage, so that where, where the town barns are, you're saying is a is an ag rural area? Yeah, it's an ag rural area. It's, it's governmental governmental use. Right. Which supersedes the law. Yeah. Which it says somewhere in here. It does say but, somewhere in there. It says it's yeah. quite clearly. Okay. So we've, we've talked about this before. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a state. It's another one of these states. Yeah, yeah, it's like we can't, we don't have any say over what they do in McCormick. Right, right, right. 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 Or the at Caroline School. Or, right. Yeah. But I think, you know, in relationship to that question, vis a vis the highway project, this board has been very careful to consider, especially deciding that the only thing we have determined, decided upon is siting of that project. And the, the rationale, one of the rationales that we use for siting of that project is to be consistent with the comprehensive plan, which is a guiding document for this as well. So I think that mm -hmm. I think we I think the the town, this town board is very sensitive to that, to that yeah. consistency. On this, on the, uh, just to go back to the cemetery definition, should yeah. it be human or pet, or should be human or yeah. animal? Animal. 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 I might have Humans some horse animal. ashes. I want. Animal. I want. Animal. Yeah. Humans are animals. It's true. Just want to point that out. It's true. Biologist speaks. Just animal. What else? It's just animal. Yeah. No, I just I did a full stop on people. Just, we'll just went over the definitions and wait a second. Because we just had a cemetery meeting and I brought up, well, what about if we did a section for pet cemeteries? And just that's why, mm -hmm. you know, okay. maybe it's. I think that think, validates think what we originally said. Yes. Even you if we know. just left it unstated, it would be fine. All the better. Maybe yeah. all the better. Okay, I changed it. Let's leave it the way it is. Either way. Yeah. Either way, I can go, you know. What would you prefer, Cal? Human or animal. Okay. Well, humans human or animals. animals. How about human or other animals? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that because we are <laughs> human biologists too. Um, that's. If anybody wants to bury their pet plant, well. Yeah. <laughs> what? If anybody wants yeah. to bury, bury their pet, pet plant? plant. <laughs> that's called composting. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So or pet shoe. Yeah. <laughs> They had all those mummified cats in Egypt. I get another in the, in the yeah, Egyptian tombs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, is there another one, Mark? All right. Yeah, I just want to bring up the other one you brought up about 8.9b. Um, so, and that actually, I think, um, Dr. Nan is, is, is redundant with 8.9a. So I would suggest that we just, and she suggested, we just remove it. Okay. So 8.9B was... is on, uh, yeah, special use permits. And it, what, what B did is it just says, may include those related to the design of structures or operation of use necessary to ensure compatibility with surrounding uses, which is already yeah. inferred in A. So I, yeah. I agree with okay. that. Yeah. Unnecessary. Yeah. Three more, one more paragraph we can take out. Yeah. All right. Any other thoughts? Quandries. I had a question about the stream size and what that refers to, but fine. That's a, to me, an editing question. So yeah. you know, okay. if you want to put, uh, call a stream side, you know, riparian zone or something like that, I'm totally good with that. But I think it's just okay. a language thing okay. either way. And, and as I recall, we ended up using that because some people were confused by what repairing zone that. So we use okay, strange. Okay. Okay. Well let's leave it as is. 
That was a change. I guess I was thinking the stream bank and the buffer zone and stream side seemed. Because I mean, it's 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 in a it's, it, the one you pointed it to mm -hmm. is just descriptive about mm -hmm. the purpose, right? And that, that, of I'm protecting. Fine. I just wasn't sure how so. much we needed to have everything to, to find exactly, so we don't need you there. I don't see anything else in my notes, Mark, yeah, that we didn't cover. I don't have anything else either. I don't think until. So. Um, so we're done with that. Are we, are we um, now are we settled with, with making substantive changes to, to what we want to put forward to the Republic? Great. So, so then, can I make a resolution? Oh yeah, you can make one. That the town board adopt as the final draft the current draft as amended to the state for presentation to the public. With the changes. With the changes yeah. in view of a public hearing. Yeah, Jesse, so, was that too wordy? So, yeah. I got it. I just uh, need a second. Yep. I lost my agenda. Oh, there it is. I don't know. Here. But crazy. I don't no, think so. I had number scribbles. It's probably in this notebook here. Is someone going to second it? Oh, okay. Seconded by Michelle. Any further discussion? So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. So, that was not a, a resolution intended to replace the one no. agenda, right? No, that was a resolution just so that we're clear, we're crystal clear on the status of change the document document and the changes in the draft. Great. Great. So I will offer a resolution to set the public hearing on the proposed zoning law. Um, so whereas by resolution 64 of 2021 adopted February 10th, 2021, uh, the Caroline Town Board formed a zoning commission to develop a comprehensive zoning plan for the town and where the Caroline Zoning Commission approved their final report for the town board on March 27th. 23, after 51 public meetings and a rigorous process that encouraged and considered public input and whereas the town board accepted the commission's report on April 5th, 2023 and has now completed its review and amendments as agreed Today, therefore, be a resolve the Caroline Town Board hereby sets a public hearing to hear comments on the town's proposed zoning law for January 31st. May I propose January 31st, 2024, which is a Wednesday? Is that good for everybody? Great. At 7 p.m. at the Caroline Town Hall and apply to Zoom teleconference. And for further be it resolved, the final draft zoning law shall be posted on the town's homepage and uh, notice published in the town newspaper and sent to all interested agencies um, as identified in um, resolution 101 of 23, the initiation of our state environmental quality review. Um, and further be it resolved, um, the final draft of the zoning law shall be submitted to Tompkins County Planning and Sustainability for General Municipal Law 239 and then review. Second. That's it. Second by 10. And any further discussion? So, and just to, so yeah. So, um, this is to um, enable us to continue the seeker process. Um, we need to send the um, Draft law for consideration by the agencies we identify, or the you know bodies we identified as interested 
and to the uh, as interested agencies and to the county planning department as well. And they need a month for be given a month for, for their review. Mark, will there be room in this? Can we, we, we have we some voted on this? Where so, we on this? Yes. Well, I think it's a legitimate question. No, but only if it would help a much larger venue, certainly there'll be much interest in the kind of public here. So, any further questions about the no. resolution? No. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And um, we have discussed the venue, Pete, and yeah. I think this is a, a great venue. It holds 75 people, and we have the audio video technology here for remote attendance. So I think it'll be a good, a good venue. And if we held it anywhere else, we wouldn't have that capability, that robust capability. So this is really. What happens if, if more people show up and let the fire marshal mix in the building? Uh, well, um, People can speak in order and yeah. other people can wait online, come in and speak outside the building. Or they can they can go and participate on Zoom. I think that's unreasonable. Why? So I don't want to get into it. We're not going to do that. So. I'll just state that it's unreasonable. You can fill in the blanks as to why we have you shooting later. We should have one more public hearing. Yeah. Yeah. You can see what the attendance is like at the first level. Here. Well, yeah. the the zoning commission had one public hearing, went fine. There were no more than, as I recall, seventy five people there, um, and it was fine. Right. I mean, that's the thing. I think we were worried about that, but there were never more than seventy five people on um, any of the hearings. Yeah, the zoning commission had. Anyway. Uh... Yeah, we we talked about this. We want this. We want people to have Zoom, right? We, we want to have Zoom facilities. So that limits us. And we, we also need that. to remember that people will be encouraged to submit comments in writing. Yeah, in how about the community center? Doesn't that there are all kinds? Nope. We had a special setup for that that I think friends of Gene and it also yeah it's it didn't work very well. And I'm not sure the community centers. Pardon me. I'm not sure the community center is that much bigger, is it? Oh, I mean, can you be sure that it would hold more than 75 people? 75 people in here would be standing room only for sure. Maybe. I mean, how many sit on a bench here? You might get 14 on a bench times three. Well, then it's chairs on the sides. Yeah, that's all another 14 times four is. I think you're getting close Good to 75, text. but I, I think the Zoom capability is important. I, I agree with that. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Moving on. Uh, Michelle, you want to open this discussion? Offer, um, you can offer a resolution. Yep. Oh. Well, um, <clears throat> I guess there's, there's been a lot of discussion, as I mentioned, I think at the last uh, at the last uh, our last town board meeting, I suggested a, uh, creating um, a, a history room advisory board. There's been you know certain discussions about what it needs or what it doesn't need or, or whatever. So I think a way to to solve that would be to have it on um, a committee. So do you want me to read my resolution there? I suggested. Oh, uh, that'd be fine. Yeah, I just pull that. I mean, I think to me the virtue of that would be be a really good way to stay connected with the town board and to support the, the history room and its objectives. So. Yeah. So um, I'm saying the town board will establish the history room advisory committee to support the activities and collections of the history room in the town of Caroline. In addition, it will facilitate communication between the history room, the town council. And members of the community. Now, uh, I'm suggesting the committee would be composed of up to two council members, the town historian, the deputy town historian, and one or two uh, community members. So. I, th I think that one of the things that this will do will also 
uh, provide a bridge of communication between the history room and also the the citizens of Carolina who are very, very involved in the history club. And I think, I think it'll be a great thing to have. It'll also be a, a, a communication hub for the town board to understand what's going on in the complexities right. of the center. So what I'm they need in favor of right. yeah, space and, yeah. and, space and, and uh, programs, uh, I think. And just a procedural question. Did, did you just read uh, your resolution? For consideration, is that it? No, I was kind of reading it for information, but I can reread it for uh, well, consideration. I, I just wanted to know if you wanted a second on it. So. Oh, should I reread it for? No, I mean, no, no, okay. That's fine. I, I All right, that's my are. proposal. So then I'm I'll looking for a second. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Who seconded it there? Okay. Yeah. So, All right. So I think, um, yeah, any thoughts? So I think that makes sense. We had a pretty thorough discussion of it in yeah. a last at the agenda meeting. So, so I guess the, the questions are who the members would be. I would like to be on it for a moment. Well, let's pass the pass this and then let's okay. pass it and then we can worry about filling the okay. the committee after yeah. that. All right. Yeah. And I think um we're in the the this will be the founding resolution since I don't think I don't think we've had this before. Um, but would we want to specify, or do we just leave it to the committee how they operate and how often they meet, or we want to say something about that? I think it'd be more after the passing. I think it'd be yeah, kind of up to them to decide the schedule what they feel is needed, rather than us dictating. I mean, we could we could say court, recommend quarterly. I think we should quarterly. recommend at least four quarterly. times a year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we should rec recommend certain minimums. Yes, yes. I think they'll probably meet more often because I think yes. historians right. like to meet a lot. Yeah, <laughs> but I think there should be a minimum of quarterly. Yeah, days. yeah. I think they should have to come each time with ten new photographs, old photographs. <laughs> <laughs> Is there some place for um, community to see what oversight or um, what, what the relationship is between the board and the town historian? Like, are you, are, does the historian answer to the town board in terms of whatever collections or hours that they're open, or does the town board get to dictate how it's run in the history room? I, I don't know. Well, that's why I want to have this committee. Here. Yeah. Can I uh, can I just read the uh, uh, yeah. one thing I didn't include? So there's a New York State a section, of New York State law, and it says uh, New York State law 5707 mandates the appointment of a town historian in order to quote promote the establishment and improvement of programs for the management and preservation of local government records with enduring value for historical or other research. Encourage the coordinated collection and preservation of non governmental historical records by libraries, historical societies, and other repositories, and carry out and actively encourage research in such records in order to add to the knowledge, understanding, and appreciation of the community's history. So that's mandated by New York State law. And whether, so I think how the history room meets that mandate would be under discussion by the committee. That's what I would imagine. Our ambition. I agree with that. So, so it's an appointed position. The historian is yes. the historian. Yes. Right. And we have to have. And we have to have. <laughs> right. So yes. So, uh, but it doesn't really say how this is all carried out, right? So. You mean in terms of the committee itself? No, I mean as far as really what shows that she's or he or she is encouraging oh, research and all that right. stuff. None of that's correct. Specified. I mean, <laughs> my understanding is that we've all always operated since I've been in this town. We've always operated uh, under the good trust and will of the town historian to to take care of our needs, mm -hmm. which has worked out pretty well. I mean, it, it, it seems like 
we're at a little bit of a tipping point because we have archival issues, archival needs, election needs. We also had an, an explosion of interest across the town in local history, which seems to have far exceeded the, the pipeline that the local historian, the town historian, had in the past. So it could be that this would be really a great thing. I don't, I don't, but I don't think that this committee is being established to dictate no. to the town historian how and when and where to do the job. Right. Right. That's advisory. Yeah. Or, or just pass on, I think possibly pass on concerns. You know, right. some people like to say we so would like to have fun. elementary school tours. Could that be arranged or or something? You know, it'd be just a way to communicate. Well there are going to be ways to offer suggestions besides forming a committee, another committee. And if you have concerns or suggestions to regard to me, it would be respectful if you as a board would sit down with her and discuss what your issues are or concerns are or what you would like to see. The committees are not always Well, I think I don't think we know what we want. And so it seems to me a committee is a good way to discuss it. I mean, it, well, you to me, a committee is a good way to- From the community, there's all kinds of ways. We do surveys, we interact with the community. There's different things out there. And to be honest, the law was enacted in 1919 for an unfunded mandate for the towns or municipalities to have town historians. And as far as I can tell now, between 1919 and about 1970-something, the town board had no budget. The current and, and Barb's been in it for I don't know how many years. So if, if your things you think need to be done differently or things that you think she needs, to me, it would be mm -hmm. respectful to sit down and have a discussion with her before you move forward. Well, she would be included in this committee, so it seems to me that's a way to facilitate the conversation. So, just I, did, I do want to clear. I did talk to Barb about this idea, and and she was supportive. She's very hesitant that it's not going to be advisory in nature. Well, I guess we don't know until we try. But I mean, the the intention is for it to be advisory. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I I, I guess I don't think. People Especially should think not, otherwise until you know start trying to do it. This is definitely not intended to be disrespectful of Barb. I I, I think the world of Barb, um, and um, so this is just intended to be supportive of the needs of the history room and and helpful. So and it, you know I think it'll I think doing something like this you know it encourages participation and communication and I just think it's great. Our best concern is probably to ask why now? Well, because we have somebody on the town board that's interested in conserving uh, historical artifacts. Well, there are ways you can do that as a citizen, I mean. I just happen to be on the town board and it happens to be an interest of mine and I need a committee. And so, <laughs> So that's why now. Uh, Fair enough. Okay. okay. Yeah, my question. Uh, but I feel like, you know, there's a certain amount I could bring to just check out the collections. And but could we be able to do that screw? Isn't there some kind of an informal? Well, we, 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 okay, so, yeah. <laughs> okay. we could let Michelle yeah. finish her sentence. Speak. Yeah. I would appreciate so anyway, it. I apologize. <laughs> no, so I guess I don't see, to me, a committee is a good way to get people together to talk. And that's all it's designed to do. Okay. And so it's not costing any money. It's not, you know, I think we're all volunteering our time. Like I guess I don't see the problem. If we're not, we're not uh, putting in new laws, we're not, yeah, right. you know, yeah. we just want to talk. I do, I do uh, regret or whatever. I would hate it if, if, you know, certainly not the board 
yeah, trying to be dictatorial or something like that. It's not the well, advice like at all. We had all kinds of advisory committees that engage people on water issues and sure. energy and sustainability issues, and they're really great. I'm just curious, but isn't there some kind of committee out there? I mean, something that I've heard of, I don't think. Isn't there some group of Caroline Historical Society? I'm not sure. The Caroline Historical Association. Uh, would, that, would the committee be redundant in terms of the existence of well, that? Well, they don't, you don't, I, they, I guess it doesn't seem to me that they're working with Barbara Cohn, right? They are very, very intimately working with Barbara Cohn. But I, I but it doesn't, working with us, so. it doesn't supplant that, or yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, so anyway. No. So I do I, want to keep it a town board discussion. I think, this be, I think this will be very helpful to the town board to receive a broader understanding of the multiple activities that are going on across the town related to town history. And also, as we, we have a, a major building restoration project facing us, and it would be a very, very good way <clears throat> to make sure to integrate mm -hmm. the history room yeah. into those discussions. And so I think it's I think it's fantastic. I mean, I'm, I'm personally concerned about the renovation and how that's going to affect the collections in the uh, history room. Right. And that's why I feel like the town board and the history, the historian and, you know, we all need to communicate about this, about what's in there and how it's going to be treated and how the how the uh, renovation is going to affect it. So, I mean, that's what everything's at risk when you do a renovation at a building. The collections are really at risk. So, you went like for an entirely different direction in terms of the history room and renovation than an advisory committee to me. I think that there should be discussion about the renovations and, and that, but that to me is an entirely different track than an advisory committee. I guess I can only, I guess we're, we're keeping this to the, yeah. advice, but I can only say that uh, my intention of proposing this is that this is purely an information gathering advisory committee that would promote discussion between the town board and the historian yeah, support the and, and to support the historian because there have been questions about you know well, how much how much is going to be done up there and who's going to be hired to do what or whatever and so just to organize it and just say you know in a, in a lot of this we've heard from some people we haven't necessarily heard from barbara Cohn. i just think it would be nice to sit down and be able to discuss this stuff face to face four right. times a year no. Great. I, I'm ready to vote. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just from what I'm hearing, one of the things should be the safety of the collection that's there mm -hmm. because this yeah. renovation is going to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we don't want to be kind of chasing it after the fact. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just like to be organized for before you start doing something big. I like to have a plan. And I think this could help. Right, this could help, but just having discussions, I think, is really important for planning. Right. Well, and I think we're really fortunate to have a board member with deep professional expertise in the area of archiving and preservation. And so I'm happy to have you take the lead on this and, and help okay. us all out. Great. Shall we vote on it? Yeah. Can we have it? We put in the what reports or meetings would be expected each quarter, at least quarterly, something yeah. like that. Okay. Okay. Then I'll call a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Great. Thank you. All right, so now we have a number of uh, we have a number of um, how can I say 
very process uh, resolution. So the first one, um, this resolution is to set the 2024 employee wage rates um, as we discussed during budget time. So Revolve the Carolingtown Board hereby approves a 2024 wage increase for non-union employees of 3.2%. Second, second by Cal. And uh, there's no further discussion. I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Opposed? That was easy. Like that. Um, and then um, Popular resolution to set the 2024 employee health insurance terms. And did you have a chance to read through it or do you want me to read through it again? Um, so it's class A employees um, defined as 30 or more hours a week, 16% um, premium share. Um, they can have family or individual coverage, and um, then it offers the HR and HSA offerings that the town provides. Um, the Class B employees, skipping down, um, that's 20 to 30 hours a week. They are eligible. Um, They would be responsible for 50% of the premium um, without a town contribution to the HS to an HSA. And then Class C employees would be eligible at their own expense uh, without an HSA. And then, so, so for Class B, um, I haven't made any designation here. But they, um, with this language, they would be eligible for either family or individual. It could be that part time employees, 20 to 30 hours, we would offer individual coverage only. That's one thing I had thought of. Nobody currently, um, we don't have any employees in this category right now. Which one? Yeah, class, class B, class 20 to 30 hours a week. What is Class B then? It's just in our personnel policy how we define them. Is that your oh. question? But it's, well, no, the class so the class A is 30 or more hours. Yes. And class B is 20 to 30. 20 to 30. And the class, class C is less than 20. Okay. On All right. Need a second. For me? Can I second it? Oh yeah, you can second it. Seconded by Tim. So is this the same as it's been? Is there a change here? It's I, I currently last year we provided health insurance to part-time employees, 20 to 30 hours a week. And oh, I, I see. So now we don't think we made 50. any designation about that or whatever. But okay. I I, I don't think we should do that. I think I, I think that's creates a lot of problems. Um, okay, I remember discussing this last year. Mm -hmm. Right. But it hasn't it created problems this year? It it's it hasn't created problems just because nobody take has taken no 20 to 30 hour we don't really so well it would be one possibility um maybe um lindsay so anyway at any rate the question it <laughs> so that's besides the point no I no should, i shouldn't be talking about individual uh, oh yeah our discussion last year i remember <coughs> about you know but one thing was that there are some major employees employers in the area that do offer benefits at 20 hours a week well, this is a benefit. I know it's We're a benefit. I'm saying benefit. it's if uh, they, they offer health care at 20 hours per week, over 20 hours per week, they offer the health care benefit. Okay. So, 
Okay. So you, you, you're proposing that class B employee should be the same as class A? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I disagree. Yeah. We, we had this disagreement last year. Okay. So I remember this. <laughs> I just don't see the point changing it back. But, um, I, I'm sorry, just for my own clarification here then, um, when you say the 20 to 30 hours, does that, it's the health insurance given to the code officer for the position or for the hourly? It's just for position. the position. Yeah, it's just for the position. We advertise that with the position. I'm not going to make a fuss about it, but I don't know. Well, there's really a board discussion. There. I mean, I guess, you know, the, the issue is whether there's a tipping point or not, where you, where that would become problematic. If we Wait, offered, if we offered, if we offered class B, I mean, we wouldn't offer class B the same as we offer class A. Anyway, because they're not full time. Right. I mean, you offer people different layers of protection based upon the amount of service they do to the town. Because so we're talking about the town's contribution to their health care, right? That's my erection. There are a lot of people who can't, who work 20 hours a week, who need health insurance, who have a family at home, and they have other jobs that are not, or they have a farm, they have kids, and they need health care at 20 hours a week. But if you're and working, so, I mean, just, you know, I, I appreciate that, but if you're working, 20 hours a week, mm -hmm. that's a half time job. Yep. So if I if I really, you know, if I met, looked at this head on, mm -hmm. you know, that person would be eligible for individual coverage, but not family coverage. Um, that would make sense to me. Um, but is the just for clarification, so would that same individual helper be able to subscribe to family coverage? On this plan or not? I'm just well. The way I've written it here, they would be able to. They would be able to. Would be able to. I mean, that's that's important to clarify. Okay. So that's a that's you know I mm -hmm. I pen this you know this was my best sort of you know approximation of what I thought might be about fair, right, and reasonable. So um, under this proposal. Class B employees um, would be eligible for a family or individual with a 50% employee contribution. Right, I just wanted to clarify that. Right. Okay. Without, but I just, but without, without a town contribution. Without a town contribution. Without a town contribution, the XSA, that's correct. Right. That's right. Well, if I were looking for a 20 hour a week job because I need benefits, I wouldn't take a town job. I mean, you're talking to somebody who's, you know, a caregiver at home and working and other people do that too, or they've got a farm and they've got a lot of other things going on. So then they look for a part-time job mm -hmm. to try to get benefits. And so wouldn't be here at the town. I'm not completely against it. I don't think it makes that much impact on people, but I'm just saying that that's... Mm -hmm. And I know we're not going to solve the health on, insurance problems the, here at the on, local level. On, on, so that's on the a, flip side, yeah. um, you know, yeah. you know. <laughs> anyway, I, I think it's really complicated, mm -hmm. and I think I think to Am me I? the best solution is to fit the benefits, as Tim kind of summarized, the, the benefits should fit approximately the. 
the job correct or with the town group board yeah yeah I mean, to me, what's important is that we're providing all town employees with the ability to opt into our insurance program. And we're layering the town's contribution to that accordingly. So the question is whether you think this is a fair way to do it. So for historically, Mark, um, in terms of the numbers of employees that we've had, just generally, how many employees have we had at level C annually and at level B? Just roughly, you know. Roughly zero. No, about two at C or, or maybe. As I said, maybe zero B. Excuse me? But you said we had zero Bs. Oh, no. Oh, that we're taking health insurance. Yeah. But, yeah. So, no, but it doesn't mean they're taking it. I want okay. To know how many know. employees we have yeah. who would potentially be eligible for Maybe about three. Mm -hmm. okay. But I still think it's, you know, the decision should be made based on the position and responsibilities and not the number of employees. Like, so if we have one up, employee, just trying to think of the the potential hit on the town mm -hmm. based on our contributions to this at all. Mm -hmm. no, sure. Trying to figure out what we could afford, yeah. what we couldn't afford, what we would want to pay, what we wouldn't want to pay. You know. Right. I have, I don't know how much it costs. It's about thirteen thousand a year for family, and maybe eight thousand a year for individuals. A lot of money. It is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. I'm sorry. Again, I just have one other comment, and that is I don't necessarily know if I would agree for myself or a future clerk um, that I'd be classified as a Class B employee, but I would fall or my position would fall under that. So if that's the wording that you're, if you're basing it off of time served and not the level of service or whatever you just said, Mark, I think those are, are two separate things. You said code office gets medical insurance. So just be the dental clerk gets. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've, we've done that. Um, we've specified health insurance co coverage for different elected positions. Okay, this law is codified. Is that specified? We're specified, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we have an uh, organizational resolution about. Okay. The, yeah. So we could specify that. So we could certainly specify that. Um, I mean, I could well imagine wanting to specify that for clerk, mm -hmm. highway supervisor, and code officer based on their elected positions and also the magnitude of their responsibilities. Code officer's not elected. But yeah. Well, no. But yeah. So we did it last year for my position, supervisor. Right. And um, we've always done it for the highway superintendent. So, so I think we should have the clerk. If yes. the clerk's not there, we should have the clerk. We do that in the organization. I, I didn't know that that was desired. Right. Well, it's just logical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a resolution on the table. Um, comfortable voting on it or it's hard isn't it especially yeah. since you took my agenda people are very quiet and i keep losing it on my phone mm -hmm. so i can't read it <laughs> what's that Tim? you it's especially hard because you took my agenda 
Oh, I'm trying to get it off. I didn't know that. <laughs> There's a bunch of them right over there. I'll get one. <laughs> Well, I think it's odd. I don't know how much we want to talk about this, but I think it's odd that class C employee who's only working what you know less than twenty hours a week. The whole idea that oh, you could just spend the thirteen thousand dollars that you might make here. On their health insurance. I don't know. I just kind of think that's, that's not the implication. Pretty, so well, I just well, that's what I'm looking at. Like, well, that's so would you suggest we just provide health insurance for all employees? I swear that, but no, I'm not suggesting that. Um no, I'm I'm suggesting the inequities that, of the medical yeah, right. I'm wondering it's you know. <clears throat> A lot of people trying to make ends meet, have health insurance, and spend time with their family. So, <laughs> so and I tiny, mean, like, oh, we're just gonna like spend. I mean, like taking care of the kids and you know, doing work at home, and that's work too yep. that comes to the community. So I would like to stay with the the twenty hour a week, right? Yep. Health insurance, yes. like Cornell does, the county does. So what you're recommending is to combine class B and C. No, you recommend. No. I'm saying we should have class B should have health insurance after you work 20 hours a week. You should be getting health insurance like other um, places around the county do offer at 20 hours a week. You know, I mean, it's but. I do see the work you put into it, Mark, and I do see that it is That's right. more equitable. But I, I mean, it's not more equitable. I understand that you're trying to be fair. And I don't really see a way to make it fair. But I do know, like, there are a lot of jobs at the county and Cornell where they're operating 19 hours per week working. So you don't get, you know, you don't get benefits. But there are once a 20 hours we do. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. In that system. But anyway, I'm done. I mean, we're not Cornell, so. We are not Cornell, I know. That's true. Got a slightly smaller endowment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would be happy with going with this this year and then seeing where the cards fall. Over the course of the year and return it to it. Comparing it with other the counties. Yeah. 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 With going with this now and continuing to research it. Reflect and research it for the following year. Okay. I mean, I guess it doesn't seem like this meeting is the meeting to discuss it. No. no. That's quarter of nine. I mean, maybe what we should do for next year, Mark, is in the summer, roughly, you know, as we start into budget season, schedule time to talk about the insurance options packages. Yeah. 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 And also maybe, maybe since we have new board members, especially, do uh, we can do a little, uh, you know, information session yeah. on this so that everybody's up to speed. I'm not sure I'm really understanding everything here, but I'm willing yeah. at this point in time to go with, with your discussion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did, did I mean, you want to ask about questions about anything or? No. Okay. Um, just that if we were going to debate it, I think it should have been done before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this would be, I mean, you know. Historically, we've always done this. This time of year, so yeah, it's not good. Good. but to Michelle's point, this is a good example of things that are good to wrestle with before the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but so, but I realize you know yeah. we haven't had this that long either. So right. Yeah.
And you know the other the other thing that you know I think would be helpful, which we didn't do this year, we've done in the past, is to have a more robust presentation at the consortium and what the options are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's what the options are. Maybe mid year or something like that. Oh, part of an information session. Okay. From the consortium or of the about of you know just a broader presentation to the board. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. More information. Because I don't yeah. have I don't have a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So. All right. Well, with um, I guess I'll call for a vote. Yes. So. Yeah, sorry that people are uh, ill, Ill informed. But, no, it's so. not a matter of that. It's all this. Yeah. Uh, no, we. It's it's more matters. These are complex issues, and what's we've always depended upon. The town's representative the consortium to think all of this stuff through for us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. it would just be good mm -hmm. in the future, maybe mm -hmm. in the summer, just to spend 30 minutes talking about it. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. It's not, not criticism at all. No. Okay. I'm and, and with that, just with that understanding and moving forward, so I feel better about it. There's the okay. Call for vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is the resolution to authorize the three year contract that was shared for cloud permit for the code enforcement office. Can we just do one year? Did people get to look at it a little bit? Yeah. But I just, you know, to tie ourselves into something for three years, it's kind of new. And there's probably other new stuff coming along. And I don't know. It's just that's that's my. But at least it's only three years. I think that's what I thought. Okay. Well, I just well, for these kinds of operations. Yeah. The, the, they spent the first year setting everything up. I hear you. It's okay. It's a significant. Yeah, they just. It's not trivial money. Right. Um, yeah. And. Okay. I, I, you, you, you're much more versed in it. I just see, I don't know. you know, a three year commitment. I kind of go, well, just as an outsider, just going to go. Well, the first year, there's the startup costs, which are significant. Yeah. And then, you know, I really hate to. And it's going to take us a couple of years after that to see okay. how it works. Mm -hmm. We could really get a good software. Yeah. So, three years is reasonable. Well, you know, you're both right. I mean, it takes an incredible amount of time to get up to speed on this stuff that's so complex. And just about the time you're up to speed, somebody comes up with a new and better idea and you'd be a Neanderthal not to take up with that. I mean, you're screwed no matter what you do. But this one, this one has the virtues of being cloud-based. Yeah. And so it's, so I understand it, information, you know, it's archived. Got permanently archived and it's easily shared. And so, and it's bing, bing. so like the data can be collected in the field and okay. uploaded. Oh. And the town of Groton's doing it. Yeah. I believe they're. Yeah. And you mentioned that earlier, how that, you know, yeah, it seems to be the system that yeah. compatibility with other. And, and it is true that most of these kinds of. Uh, Contracts ask for a five year commitment now. I mean, they, they really can be very, very long mm -hmm. because they're putting their investment up front and they want to see some return. We went through that, you know, when we, when you think about the electric charger, the different people's electric chargers, I mean, yeah. the, the length of contract that those people wanted was remarkable. Yep. Yep. Comfortable voting? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Proposed. Um, so now we have the fire contract put forward. So authorizing myself to sign the 2024 Caroline fire protection contracts with Speedsville and Brickendale fire companies. District. 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 Oh, well, yeah. Um, Speedsville is a company and Brickendale is a district, but I was just trying to shorten the right. sentence. But yeah, no, I guess it, it is a clear okay. distinction. Yeah. Because there is a Brooklyn Fire Company. Provided they do more. Brooklyn Fire District. Well, Brooklyn Fire District. 
different to the legal entity that the levies on that. I'll second that. So okay. I said by two. Right. So um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Good, thank you. And authorize the supervisor to sign the 2024 agreements for cooperative purchasing of workers' comp insurance. I'll second that. Uh, that's with the Brooklyndale and Slater Real Fire Districts. And we resolve the town board authorize the supervisor to sign the 2024 DML 119-0 agreements for corporate purchasing for workers' compensation insurance. And Cal, you seconded that, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And I bet you everybody's ready to vote on that, right? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, this is an offer resolution to transfer. What about transfer oh. Mr. Crow to a different firm? You, missed, you skipped one. You skipped eight. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I put I, I, I wrote my notes down there. Sorry. Thank you, Cal. Authorizing the supervisor to sign the 24 agreement for legal services with Guy Crow. Is he? Is he? No second. Second by Cal. Is he giving us any indication if it would be changing fees? I don't think so. He says the contract is yeah. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great. Now I'm going to transfer to reserve accounts from A1620.43 Town Hall Capital Reserve to the A231 Town Hall Reserve, 30,000 remaining in there. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Kate. She got it. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Thank you. Eight. Uh, I meant to take 10 out because I'm not going to do transfers tonight we'll do those oh, right. on January 3rd. Okay. And then I'll offer a resolution to pay the town bills for the amounts of $60,858.80 for the A fund. $102,574.75 for the DA fund and $1,006.74 for the street light fund. I'll second that. Second by Kate again. Go crazy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I also will offer a resolution to, if agreed, set the organizational resolution for 2024. 7 p.m. on January 3rd, which is a Wednesday. Yep. Is that okay? I, I have eye surgery that day. Oh. So I probably won't be here. How long do you recuperate from eye surgery? It's usually a day or two. So Thursday would probably not be good either, right? It probably would. I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. Probably I not. think that would be pushing it. Yeah, I'm gone the following week. Pardon me? And I'm gone the following week. You're gone the following week? Okay. You know, I've got doctor's appointments the second and the third. Mm -hmm. So, oh. sorry. Well, I, I, wanted, I, missed, I missed it last year. Did you miss it? Yeah, it was going to be your turn. Your turn is the best. My turn is yours. Okay. Yeah. I guess you're okay with that. Yeah. yeah. We'll let you know what happens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I will call for. Uh, I mean, I will miss it being there. I mean, it's, but because it's just kind of you know, it's just start of the new year. Yeah. New year, but yeah. So all in favor? Aye. Did Aye. I get a second on that? Oh, uh, I'll second it. Okay. Second. Okay. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. So. Uh, great. So. Uh, I think we might be done. No. Oh, exactly. Not at all. <laughs> no, we're we're never done. We're not done. We're done. Do you send out an email today about the website? Or do you want us to? Oh yeah, yeah, the website. Um, I, I don't think we need to discuss it. I no. think I think we need more information. Okay. So let's just put that off till yeah. the next time. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, offer a motion to adjourn. Second. Tim beat me. I don't know who that was. Tim? Tim. Tim? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Meeting is adjourned. Thanks, Jesse. Aye. Thanks.